Mr. Speaker, Your Excellency the President, His Excellency the Prime Cabinet Secretary and the Right Honorable Speaker of the National Assembly, our Governor for Mombasa County, the Honorable Abdul Somad, Honorable Members, good afternoon. Your Excellency, allow me to first take this opportunity to thank you for having afforded time out of your busy schedule to join us as members of the National Assembly in this post-election conference. It's not lost on us, Your Excellency, that since 2013, when our former president, President Huru Kenyatta, attended the first post-election conference, or, or rather seminar, this is the only other post-election seminar that has been graced by the presidency, and we welcome you and thank you for having found time to join us. Allow me to, Your Excellency, to take this opportunity to profoundly thank all the members of the National Assembly and our staff in Parliament for also having afforded time from their otherwise very busy schedules during the recess period. And you will appreciate, Your, Ex Your Excellency, that these members took leave from their long recess to be able to be here in Mombasa for close to two weeks, first for the induction workshop last week and this week for this post-election conference. Your Excellency, this post-election conference comes at a very good time because it comes towards the tail end of our long recess after the first session of the 13th Parliament. And just at the nick of time before we resume Parliament in the next two weeks or so. And Your Excellency, as you are well aware, having served as a member of Parliament, the session that we are going into, this session beginning uh, in the next two weeks, is usually the most busy session of any parliament. As my brother and colleague, Honorable Pio and I has mentioned, we'll get into the budget cycle and the finance bill, and it's a very busy season for parliament. And indeed, this seminar then comes at a very good time to be able to equip all members of parliament with the knowledge and the skills to be able to deal with all issues that will come before them for deliberation on the floor of parliament. That's why I took time, honorable uh, members, to thank you for having afforded that time. As you're already aware, the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association that has kindly hosted this seminar together with the Parliamentary National Assembly's leadership, CPA serves to connect and to develop, promote and support parliamentarians and their staff in the advancement of parliamentary ideals by identifying benchmarks of good governance and people-centered legislatures. Your Excellency, the transient nature of our parliament, especially in this country, behoves, Honorable, uh, Honorable uh, President, that we have seminars like this to be able to build capacity among us members. And I say the transient nature uh, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Speaker and uh, Your Excellency the President, of our Parliament, in the last many years, we've had only less than 50% of members being re-elected into Parliament. But Your Excellency, the 13th Parliament is an exception and has reversed this otherwise not very good trend in our country. During the last elections in August 2022, a total of 192 members were re-elected, representing 55% of a return rate. 22 of these returning members served in the 11th Parliament or in earlier parliaments, like the Honorable uh, Chairperson of Speaker's Panel, the Honorable Member uh, for Dadab. It is also not worthwhile noting, Your Excellency, that the balance in the House is steadily picking in terms of gender balance. And out of the members that were elected in this assembly, 81 female members comprising of 47 county women representatives, 28 elected single member constituency MPs, and six nominated members are of the female gender, this representing 23% of the total membership of the House, and therefore slightly short of the 10% of 
to achieve the one-third gender rule constitutional threshold. Your Excellency aware that a number of us are first-time members. This forum is also very suitable for interaction, for experience sharing, and we've already had that opportunity from many of our resource persons who have been able to speak to us this morning, and also for expectation management on legislative discourse as a member of parliament. Honorable members, we are here to equip each other with basic knowledge on parliamentary practices and procedures, and to be exposed on how to effectively discharge our constitutional mandate. And I want to believe that the ripple effect of what we will learn from this seminar at the end of this week is better governance and service delivery to the people of Kenya. As a leader of majority in the National Assembly, I wish to assure you that we will be able to relate the new knowledge to the business of the House, both in committees and in the plenary of the House. We must rise, as the leader of minority said, above self to safeguard the welfare of our nation and realize the people's expectations of their elected representatives. This is the underpinning principle of any democracy that has regard for good governance and continuous improvement of the welfare of its people through their elected representatives. Your Excellency, it is undisputed that governments all over the world exist to serve their people. And parliaments, in effect, act as a principal lawmaking institution that is charged with the legislative function, hence setting the boundaries within which any government, including you as Your Excellency, will operate. It is my conviction that this seminar will fortify strategic interventions for adoption by the legislature to address the emerging issues in the delivery of its mandate and underpin governance in an effective and robust manner while having citizen needs at the core of everything that we do. Honorable members, politics for us, because we are elected as politicians, is a way of life for each member assembled here today. And I'll tell you, members, in my experience as a ranking member of the National Assembly, is that as much as we cannot fail to play politics in every matter, the voice of reason is always and must always prevail on every member where the people's welfare is concerned. And as much as we will hold very firm political party positions, we must never allow grandstanding to come in the way of well-intended and noble decisions that the National Assembly make in line with our constitutional mandate to serve the people that we come to represent. <laughs> Your Excellency, I want to assure you that this is a spirit I will endeavor to have matters resolved across the divide with our minority party colleagues, and similarly, and more importantly, we must, as a National Assembly, come together to play our rightful role to ensure effective oversight of the executive at all times by confirming that the actions of government are addressing emergent needs and that good governance is entrenched in our society and indeed in our country. It is also not lost on me your Excellency, that a pragmatic review of the National Assembly standing orders is critical to the realization of your government's agenda for this great nation. We shall initiate a review of the rules of procedure in order to align them to the government's agenda while protecting the independence of the National Assembly to safeguard its constitutional mandate and public interest. And I must report to Your Excellency that indeed the relevant committees have already begun work to review some of these standing orders, including the provision to allow cabinet secretaries to appear before the House and some of the other issues that the leader of minority has spoken to. Finally, honorable members, the range of topics, as the deputy speaker has indicated, that will be covered in this seminar is akin to a crash program or a crash course on all matters that you, as an effective member of the National Assembly, must be vast with. I won't take a lot of your valuable time enumerating the content of what you'll be going through in the course of the week. But suffice it to say that I am sure we shall leave this hall better equipped 
with practical experience and knowledge of what an elected leader, on what makes an elected leader like yourselves and myself become a global citizen, a servant leader of the people, and an expert decision maker on all public affairs. Honorable members, the leader of major minority, the Honorable Pio Andai, has challenged us on what the 10th Parliament is remembered for, especially in the enactment of the new constitution. And he has posed a question to us, what shall we as the 13th Assembly be remembered for? He's also enumerated the numerous challenges that face our people and some of the interventions that we should be looking into as members of parliament. I want to believe we have the capacity, we have the will, and we have the determination to make the lives of our people better than we found them. And I just want to say, if you would agree with me, honorable members, knowing the suffering that our people are undergoing today, knowing the kind of economy that we have come into office under, it is a challenge to us that this parliament must and should be remembered as that assembly that restored the economic dignity of our people and restored hope in their country. And I want to end by challenging you, honorable members that we must be able to take our rightful position as members of parliament to represent our people, to oversight government. But as I said, not to ever allow grandstanding and firm political party positions to get on the way of what is right for the people of Kenya. Let us always stand for what is right, what will improve the lot of our people, and I believe we have that capacity even to review and look at all the issues that the leader of minority has spoken to, including what you have already done with the enactment of the IBC amendment bill that has already been signed into law that was enacted by this assembly as an amendment bill of a law that was also passed in the 12th assembly. With those very many remarks, Your Excellency, thank you again for attending this seminar, and we look forward to working with your government, to oversighting your government, to ensure that indeed even your government serves the interest of the people and the people are the core of all our engagements with your government. Thank you, Honorable <laughs> Deputy Speaker and Honorable Members for that opportunity. And now it's my 